to get that out of the way. All right, let's see. Our interceptor, 150 is back in queue. Very cool. Oh, this thing does get sticky. There we go. Supposed to be a masking tape, not a strong adhesive. Okay, what else did we cover? I think that was it. Oh, yeah, the stripe. I forgot the stripe. The white, black and white stripe that made me look more like a, more like a CHP uh, bike officer. There we go. Get the other side, I guess. Maybe it's hooked on from here. I figure I scratch from the inside better than the outside. But it feels pretty nice. There we go. Not a bad masking job, huh? So yeah, this side didn't look too bad. We got all the scratches off. You know, some of the... And I believe since it's in the other bed. But again, we're not going to actually maybe uh, put the hard... Uh, cast plastic on. We'll put some more of the rubber plastic on. These guys are here. Also brought some of this too. We'll definitely put the seat on. We'll put the seat here. And these things right here are pretty much for the foot. Uh, I guess they're called the foot mat mats or something like that. They're like aluminum. And they'll go on this rubber, hard rubber, which is the same material as this one. I believe we could probably join these two together once we get this guy mounted. So let's go and get started where we left off. Uh, I did have my Jack in the Box. It was delicious. Um, today I feel like having something different. I've been eating that Jack in the Box lately. I feel like having some uh, shrimp kamaran. I'm not sure you know what that is. It's like a garlic butter shrimp with some homemade tortilla, nice and thick, and some rice and a little side salad. I usually don't care for the rice and side salad much, but you know what? If it comes with it, I'll take it. So <laughs> I'm probably going to get that for lunch today. I'm looking for it. In fact, I wanted it since last night and I wanted it for this breakfast, but they're not open until 10, uh, most of the Mexican restaurants, so I'll have to wait. So let me go ahead and get this guy here settled. And so by this time, we'll got to get this done. It's still early morning for us. So let's go ahead and get this guy buttoned up. I'm looking forward to seeing how everything else that guy has just kind of put him there in place. In fact, that's probably a good place for him to keep it for a while. We'll see until everything's cured properly so he's been sitting he's been covered up so there's no debris that can just get in there you can see <laughs> i can pretty much dust off steel I and mean, we did paint it this area here but yeah it looks very nice for um a can spray i think we did better i think when we did we cleaned the tip out and we kind of sprayed it a little bit on the cardboard this is the area here i was most worried about and i could see why i was a little worried but it's still not that bad actually i thought it was worse so it turned out pretty damn good you know, it's better than seeing all those scrap marks, right? So let's go and get started. Let me get a chair pulled over here. Got some oranges here. We guys need some vitamin C. Uh, there we go. Let's get this going here. Get myself situated comfortable. I got the latch here. I left it on here since yesterday. <laughs> all right, so here we go. We're going to mount this guy here. This is how we have it set up now. All the threads are here. And we're, we're deciding which screw pack we're going to take. Since this is a darker one, I'm thinking of going with that. Uh, again, we tried both. I mean, I want to save the silver one probably for the silver uh, aluminum um, thing to you know, kind of blend in. So with these guys here and this one, I think these will probably work best uh, with the silver one. So I'll show you what I mean. Just give me some room here to lay everything out the way we think. Okay, so here we go. I'll just lay it here. Okay. So you can see these silver one here, just careful not to step on it. I'm thinking of using these guys here. The reason why is because it'll blend into the silver. And I believe they only take the short ones. See these guys right here? These guys, what they do is, let's say, I'm not sure how this one sits. This is probably bring one on top. So let me pull one. This looks like, let me get the one for this side, huh? There we go. I haven't put this on again since the last year, so bear with me trying to get familiar. I think this right here helps hold it in force. It might actually go even inside of it, I believe. Probably not. But knowing this one, I think this gets mounted first. And as these goes on the surface, you can see here how to flex it. It's been straightened for almost a whole year now. Okay, I believe it goes this way, or it could be, I could be wrong. Oh, maybe the bump area, yeah. The bump area wants to face the surface. See, there's a little bump side. 
and there's a little indent side. So the ends inside doesn't face us. This actually goes over here. So this did actually go over here. So we just gotta get to the bump side. There we go. And you can see here, there's a trace of that round ring evidence. So it's actually using this guy right here. And then I guess this helps further, you know, just in case you rub your feet the wrong way and gets caught or anything like that. These little round guys, these little round guys will dig into it. So yeah, pretty much I wanna do is save the silver ones here for these little round guys. Um, so I'll go and put all these little small silver ones back. Uh, it's just saving for these guys here. There's quite a bit of them. I think there's, let's see, two, four, six, two, four, six. Those 12 right there, really. And then we got some more here. And I'm not sure this even has one. This is probably not. Uh, this is for the passenger footprints because the passenger will put their feet here. We put our feet there. The driver, I mean. So whoever's the driver. Uh, so yeah, let's see if this guy will actually fit in here. He should. I mean, there's no reason for him not to. So let me put him here as an example. Okay, so you will put him in there and then you'll drive the Phillips bolt. See that? And yeah, there's nothing to grip this one. So it's mainly the relying on this. Look at that. See, I got cold solder here, which will come off easily. There, he'll look. That's what happens when you get solder dumped. It's not really uh, baked into the metal first. Okay, so yeah, these guys will go in here and they'll sit like this. And since these are plastic screw, it actually might drive it in. Let me see. I feel like there has some. Oh, I'm way off. I'm way off. It's not even. It's not even close to up. Up where? Oh yeah, see right here. These are actually the holes for it, not these big ones right here. So these ones. So yeah, these will actually dig into the plastic and just keep them their placement there. Uh, so let's see here. I can put one kind of show and tell. So you get line it real quick here. Uh, let me get my Phillips. Try a small handle one. Change it to the Phillips from the flathead. This one's a little fatter, but I think that might work best for it anyway. Alright, so let me go ahead and try to screw one of these on here to make sure that it actually fits. Trying to get an idea of what screws are going to be allocated to where now. Again, these screws were, again, some of those hex we're not using anymore because we switched them out already for, you know, some good um, Allen bolts. So they're fine. Let me go and put this on this little tr uh, funky tripod this morning. In fact, I'm going to hook this guy back on there too so we'll have a charge. If you don't see what it looks like in full, this is it. It's the anchor battery charger here. It's probably one of their biggest lipstick charger. They call it lipstick because it looks like a lipstick. Okay, there it goes. It's fully charged since last night. It's got the Anchor logo. And you'll see also my car uh, car adapter <coughs> or car charger. I call it car charger. It should be, could be anything really. It's a scooter charger, anything <laughs> with a cigarette charger. Is that my cigarette charger, you'll see, okay? And you'll, you'll see here it says 5,000. There you go, see? Power core 5,000. So this sucker here can charge up my phone to be able to record almost four freaking hours, um, you know, given a good setting and everything like that, and not overheating, of course. Um, just a little bit of a sunlight. Keeping this cool temperature right now, since it's about good, I think over here is about maybe good 65. So we're not that freezing cold yet. Uh, but about, actually more closer to 70, it feels like. It's, it looks like it's still getting warmer. You know, there's no more rain or debris. The sun's coming up, so we're good. So, yeah. Um, let me go ahead and put this in here, and I'm going to show you if it does drive in there or not. It's kind of short compared to these other longer ones. Or maybe these guys will probably do better. I don't know. We might have to save. Actually, maybe these guys are actually for the screw for it. So, if that is the case, then we're fine. Uh, we can use either one. But let me just double check. Because I don't want to force the screw in there and later because it's a bigger setup so let me go ahead let's see here we got this small one or we can go with the big one let's see how the big one fits if the big one's probably better for it then maybe we go with the big one you can see how the big one fits look like it flushes in more right and then let's see how the small one fits it might be better off not to go with the big bump and there's a small one here and then we also have the uh, longer ones too. They're, they're the same as the small one, but they're just longer. And I think these guys might be the one actually for it. See, there's so many different ones here we have. 
you got a bigger, fatter one, same length, but skinnier, and the same uh, skinnier one, but shorter. So we're going to find out uh, which one of these three are the perfect one for it. And this is what we're going to do. So we're going to try to figure out this guy too. And let's, I know for sure he needs to have something to sit on. So this is it. This is the thing that prevents it from scraping. I'm not sure why it goes on top, but I guess it does. Okay, we're going to put the long one first. Let's see how the long one dries. First of all, I got to get to it. See there. Got to get him in that little slot of his. There we go. Okay, let's drive him in. And now the long ones is a very tight fit, then we don't want to put the big one. So it's a matter of putting the long one or the short one. There it goes, driving in. Feels a little tight, tight. Hmm. Am I making a new hole? Yeah, you don't definitely want to make a new hole. See, there it goes. Yeah, it's. it looks like I'm trying to make a new hole back there. Let's see here. It's weird to see how all of them come out. So going from the back side of this, this one has it too. Let me see if I can go like this. What I could do is drive it. I, I could test drive these guys, I guess. Uh, they're gonna be a little bit uh, bigger. So there it goes. These are the small holes that's holding in these little silver plates. These silver plates. So let me see if I can drive this one in here. I'm, I'm going to use one of the short ones, temporary, just to see how the holes are driving in. Okay, so that one works fine. So yeah, it could probably do with a short one. Um, because I don't really see the need for a long s screw to go in here. The same thing with all the screws, really. <laughs> I just don't see a need for any kind of long screw because they're not really grabbing a lot. I mean, there's no more thread after this. It's not like, you know, I mean, since they're going to be lying on this link, you don't see any kind of uh, smaller holes for these guys to come after they hit the plastic here. You know, this case here, once it mounts in there, that's it. So I'm kind of upside down, but yeah. So I'm probably going to keep the small screws for these guys and we'll just, you know, We'll just go from there i mean because i think anything longer will probably cause it to actually you know maybe start scratching this surface which that's what we we're not wanting so you can see here how it's going to be it's going to be like this let me see i'm going to put it in right now for you okay let me, let me try to put it in there okay so uh, some things are flexing here and there so this is guys, this guy will go right like, okay, let's raise him up. Oh my God, this has been so long. Okay, there you go. You see him? This is where he's going to be laying. This is the foot rest. So you can see here, he's pretty much heavily rely on these guys right here. These guys right here is going to be bolted on him. So and all the rest are, should be very small screws because if you look at it, if they go any more, I guess they will go in between these bars anyway, so it won't affect these bars. Because you can see how this one is driving. See this guy right here? He's about to drive in, right? And he's all the way over here on this side. And then we go all the way to the other side. You can see here from this view. It looks like the holes are still cleared out. They're meaning they're, they're pretty much looping around this bar. They're not really interfering. Let's see if I can get another hole area to see okay so this is going to be mounted here so all these other holes so you can see there they're coming from the other side of the bar so you got you got these small holes here this is the one that's coming out and then you flip on the other side there's the other small holes too so they're coming in a way where they're not really going to hit this metal frame here i was afraid of that so that's fine you can see here this is really nice it's very clean underneath here. There's no rust or exposed metal anymore. Well, maybe this little guy right here, but it's not a big deal. We can touch on him anytime. This right here. You know, just on the front panel. And yeah, maybe a little bit here too. That's not too shabby. All right. So, yeah. So, this is it. This is probably where it's going to be mounted at. Um, I can't put this in there right now because I actually have to 
uh, mount these other main screws in there first, I believe. So let me double check what I'm doing. But let me put my anchor in a nice cover back and hook it up. Because if I don't, it's going to get scratched up. So I'm glad they give you like a little sh little mash bag with it. Then just put it here. This is why I used to hang it on my tripod, which works really well. Right there. And then I use this part to, before I clip my phone onto my tripod, I clip this part in there. And that way the tripod weighs it down a little bit, but you know, it, it's better than dropping it. How about that? Because too many loose parts to hold and there we go. It's just on there now. So now my anchor's charged on there. It's near my battery. Yeah, so I can't put this guy on yet. Let me let me drive him back out. So I could put him with the little one. I just don't see the need for him to have a longer one. So we could, might even take this longer one for else use. But we'll see. Because I'm thinking, debating on whether to put the green bolts on these guys because they're dark color. Uh, here we go. Let me, let me put these guys back here. Okay. Because then again, I think this one here, I don't know why. I think this might be saved for maybe putting the bottom cover. Because there's another cover cord that goes from here. And it's actually, it's this guy right here, I think. Yeah, this guy's the one that's feeding the bottom. So he's kind of come from the front. And he's coming to be fed here. So, when he's fed here, you can see here, there's the hole for him. So we need to screw something It's going to hit through here. And since he's upside down, if he's reverse upside right, it's going to drive into that little hole right there. All these guys here. There should be some more here, right? And then down the line, see? So that's where these pry holes are going to be mounted securely to bring this guy up. So, and then of course this gets held here as well. So there might be a few things before we can put this guy on here. We have to actually you know, finish this guy up, you know, whatever, buff him out. Because it's easier to buff him while he's still, you know, open up like this. Um, but it's going to be harder once we put him in. Or, you know, how we're going to do it. Because we're going to attach the buffer to a drill. That's all the one we're going to use. You see here a little kind of water run mark. But, you know, this can be buffered out, though. So, other than that, it's better than seeing a whole bunch of scrap and screen, uh, paint. So, yeah, so we might have to put this after this guy. So, yeah, this one we probably don't have to worry about just yet so let's go ahead and put the ones that we know won't interfere which we're done here in the front cover we're going to do our led at a later time perhaps um, just want to get everything up and running first and then we'll do our light conversion i'm hoping apm does show his light conversion that way i can actually get an idea how to do mine so i'm looking forward to seeing apm scooter tuning on how he does his headlight conversion so here we go uh, even though he has H7, totally different socket in mind, but I'll be able to get a little bit of the concept of how he's wiring it and why he chose to do it that way. So that's that's an upcoming video I'm looking forward to seeing APM does. As well as he's going to probably be showing different uh, uh, flex, what you call that? Uh, text flex? Call it chick mix. Uh, text flex. Okay, so let me take this guy out. These are a little harder plastic. They're nice. Uh, but then again, they break easily too. You know, if you look at it, I think one side broke probably somewhere here. Uh, did it? Or I can't remember now. Anyway, there's usually, as you can see here, it's getting there. So I gotta be really cautious of it. Yeah, so far so good in this one. This one didn't break. It's, it's a little bit more hard, like ABS plastic. But yeah, these guys are a little bit hard plastic, so they break easily. All right, so we'll put this guy back up in this neck of the woods while we work on trying to just get the basic. You know this guy covered up and then we'll get his armor do we have another one? Oh, there it is yeah we'll get his armor as soon as we get him all squared away so let me just put this guy grouped together okay but these are definitely i mean these guys are for sure definitely from them we're still deciding where do we go with the big one or the small one now if we go with these color here they more blend in with the back right so that means no one can see it so much, just like we did for uh, some of these guys usually are pretty color color, like that one right there, see that? The green blends in with the black one. If we were going to put this one right here, it'll stick like a sore thumb. I mean, it'll work, but why would we want to go from a darker color to a lighter color? You know what I mean? We're trying to blend it in. So I think the green will blend in much more than the chrome one, especially these one look perfect for it. 
and again I feel so bad for these two because it's been taking all the hole from this whole set the only thing else is helping hold it to the front sort of not even securely but all these wire harness that's it but I don't think they're really giving that much support uh, so we better get started and mounting this guy quickly so we can do that um he's gonna need his own well he'll have his this is a little flap for him to open the keys are actually the same as the ignition key which is good uh, this one goes more toward the seat area to cover the the front here once we put the seat in so that's not gonna do us any good yet until we put the seat in Let's see what else uh, here's the hook for him and here's his center plate to cover up once we screw it in so these things are pretty much zenin see there he's so zenin surprised they actually have their own logo on there so yeah so it's cool so these are a little plastic part it didn't cut all the way where the zenin logo is but that's fine I'm not sure what it says here, but look like some kind of a calendar or some sort looking code. Interesting. See that? Who knows? Really? All right, so here we go. Got a little bit more energy early in the morning. That's why I like to do this fresh when I have the energy. After that, it's almost downhill for me. And usually when I'm done uh, showing case and what I'm doing on the scooter, I'm pretty pooped. Unless I come back and look at something like this and I can say, wow, so worth it. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm really pleased with the uh, Ultimate Ankle Biter and the whole CVT setup, the NCY, the dry face fan, everything. I know this is so common. People put this kind of on with the setup there. But you don't really know how gorgeous it is until you actually do it yourself and you see it. It's, it's almost like looking at someone's picture and you can appreciate it but it's so much more to be able to actually have it here and see it for yourself in real life you know it's a little bit pricey i understand that it's more of an aesthetic look than probably performance but in my situation it was a blessing because now i can actually change my variator because i couldn't do it before with the regular uh, cbt cover it just kept on hitting this side right here that little nozzle that came it bumped the side so it was almost interlocking itself and then I never used the manual Kickstarter anyway, so it just worked out well for me and in my situation. And there's a little scratch, or oh, just a dirt. I thought that was a scratch. There shouldn't be any nicks on this thing. I mean, just a normal, but not really any nicks, so. Yeah, so it worked really well for me, and I'm glad that the center kick plate worked too. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here, or else we'll never do. So let me go and get this guy back in here and hooked. Sorry, you guys are not going to be able to probably see exactly in the detail. I'll try my best to, uh, you know, carry it over here and there. But let me go ahead and try to get this guy on here today. And I uh, look forward to that shrimp camaron with garlic butter sauce, warm tortilla and a salad, and some Mexican rice. And I am set for today. I've been hooked on these other things too, like sandwiches, like banh mi sandwiches. These, they're, I guess they're Asian sandwiches. Very well known, more popular, it's called Vietnamese sandwich. A little hard baguette, the French influence took over. And you got the, you know, pickleized daikons. Maybe they put carrots too. Sometimes they don't really do that. But the main ingredients is all the other stuff mixed on with the meat and stuff. And it's so freaking delicious. Uh, I might become a food blogger, I don't know. <laughs> like Mark Weens. I, I, I always like watching that guy's uh, YouTube channel. I mean, he's... Not, you know, not for technicality, but definitely just for fun watching it. His facial expression is always epic to see when he likes something so much. You can see his neck turn. All right, so there it goes. It's coming. Uh, let me let me sort of bring it out here. So wait, actually, let me fiddle around with this first because I have no idea yet uh, how I'm going to go approach this, but I think I do. So let me go ahead and take this off here so you guys can come with me. And we can explore. Okay, so what we gotta do is hook the wires, of course, because the wires are back here now, right? So, oh, oh, ah, ah. See, little things will fall. One, two, three, four, five, six. It probably fell. It's weird, you can't tell, but I think it fell from there. I see him. Okay, so we'll put him back in, no problem. All right, so let's go ahead and get the wires the way we need it to. Again, we have what's called, I guess the G stands for ground. So we'll hook up ground to ground. Okay, so this is going to be a little tricky, so as you look at how much slack we really have to work with, right? So, and then fortunately we have to bring this guy in at the same time. So, I guess maybe we have to 
Maybe we'll have to set from the top or bottom because it looks like there's not really any slack to push them forward. I mean, very little. So these ones have a lot of slack though. I could put these guys first. Let me do that. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna aim for it. I believe the positive was sitting on the top this whole time. Uh, if I remembered, let's see here. <coughs> Excuse me. I might be um, sneezing quite often. I think I am getting a cold. I hope it's not contagious for you guys on the internet. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, let me just take it off like this. I can see it better. What am I struggling for when you can just take it off? Yeah, I think it says negative now. It kind of swamped on me. Glad we're double checking now because this is it. All right, so I can't reach over or open something up to get access to this. So I'll have to do it very, very meticulously. Okay, so it seems like the positive. Yep, it's on the top or facing forward. And then the golden one is more of the negative, I believe. Make sure of that. Don't say it, but I think it is. Let's see if it says it. Nope, so we know the positive is the silver one. Okay, we got that figured out. Let's see what this one is now. Okay, so we got ground. And this might say something like R for red, maybe. Yeah, red. Okay, so this is supposed to be a G, I guess. So yeah, G kind of upside down. But that's right there. So that's a G. And then our positive the silver one. Okay, so we got that figured out. So let's go ahead and position this in here. All right. Look at that goes right in there like that but we need to get our hands into those wires so fortunately this box doesn't come out or else we would have a little bit more access from the back here so since we don't have access to the back this might be the only access we have uh i'm almost afraid to say it but we might actually have to take this whole panel back off it's only two nozzles really holding the whole shebang up but if we do pull it from that way we will have access to it uh, or I could slide this back. Let me do this. What I'm gonna do is slide. Yeah, there you go. I can slide it back like this, but I'm still not able to yank that much. See, I need almost six more inches of clearance to get over there. Oh man, this is gonna be tricky. This was the original wire for. It's not like I made it short or anything, or did I? Let's see what I did. I probably tie strap it. Probably. Let me see. Or maybe it went underneath and I actually brought it up. I don't know. I mean, it's right there, right? I'm not able to tug on it anymore. So it had to work previously like that, I believe. Or maybe I'm the one that actually did tie it in over there. See, I'm not. Oh, look, I can actually pull some more out. So it's actually being tied by this guy. And was that me that did that? Maybe. <laughs> so that's the case, and I need to break this tie strap for a second here. Get all the slack I want first. So let me let me let me do that. Let me um, let me break this tie strap. Oh man, didn't know I was responsible for that setup. Uh, or maybe it's being tugged by something else. Let me just before I start breaking tie strap, I want to see if that is the same line that I see bundled up here. I think it is like right there right so I don't know why I bundle it so short huh okay so let me let me break it and then we'll can tie strap it afterwards after we pull all the slack excess up back from this side so let's go ahead and get something to do that hope this guy's not scraping our paint there should be fine it's kind of hard in a little bit right let me just put him down for a second all right so let's go ahead and get the right tools didn't realize that guy was in the way okay we'll prepare our new tie strap should be having plenty there we go so, we to grab. so we're going to grab it or cut it we'll bring our cutter too underneath the cracks. There we go. 
that's a cutter there. We need him. Take this one. Then we need something to drive it in. So we'll get this this guy again. Kick him over. All right. All right. So I'm going to break this guy right here. That way I can tug it up over there. So I got to be really careful snipping it. This thing is tough. That or I just don't have a really good cutter, huh? Let me go ahead and try to probe my thing in there and give it a twist. Oh man, this thing is does. Oh, mm. did more damage than I want. Uh, it's almost coming apart supposedly, but this thing is a this thing is a hard snippet. Come on. Can't be that strong. You're just a tie strap, man. <laughs> Golly. Okay, wow. Finally. Look at that. Ah. That's not what I want. Alright, that's fine. It's just some, some insulator. Oh boy. Yeah, there you go. Tie strap finally fell out. We won. Okay, so now I can pull this supposedly. Let's see. See, I still can't pull enough of it. So what's holding this little string back here? I'll figure that one guy out. Let's go back another side and see. Let's follow the wire harness. So there's a hook here, I understand that hook. And I'm trying to see where this guy, he comes over on top. If I can get his bottom in, I can see which one he is. But I'm not even seeing his. All right, let me see if I can see if I can get his bottom hook there. Let's see. Okay, my anchor charger just fell. Okay, so I'm gonna do is shove him up like this. See where he? See, he's vibrating right here. This is his actual body right there. And just because we cut that tie strap. There's not really any part of him bending. He's actually directly coming from this harness here that's hooked up to this right here. So there was no slack to give him anyway, even though we cut the guy's strap. That was pointless. All right, so now we know. I just can as well. We could probably prepare. We can hook this guy now or what? Or this guy 